Um, how do you become a manager? Well, I mean, I think there's many, many ways. I mean, you could start off um, by, you know, at university being work, working at the local college radio station, um, communicating with all the record company people who might come in, communicating with the artists that come in, communicating with their handlers that might come in with them, uh, maybe become the local college booker, you know, um, maybe get on the road with like an artist being a guitar tech and then slowly but surely learn these, you know, skills to be a tour manager. I've, I've seen some really good tour managers become really good managers. I mean, my first management experience was going on the road and being a you know tour manager and selling merch and some sometimes doing front of house sound because the band could not afford to hire anybody for it the managers free so the manager went and did it and you know the manager didn't realize that he was being a manager he was just the record company guy trying to make sure that the band went and toured so you know there's no specific way to basically start because there is no school for this um, I think a lot of people fall into it. They fall into it, but they intuitively fall into it. But I, th I think you have to have a love for music and you have to understand it. You know, not understand it and going, well, that's a hit and that'll sell millions. But to passionately understand how an artist works, to understand what is a song. A song's not a, a shirt. What is a song? It's frozen thoughts. And those frozen thoughts are collected, they create emotions. Those emotions become bookmarks to people's lives. So when you hear that song, you know, Fleetwood Mac or, you know, something from Rumors, you're transported right back to that part in your life and that's a bookmark. Those are the powerful songs. And the ability to be emotionally connected to music in that way is a huge plus for a manager because you can recognize a bookmark when you hear it. You can recognize a turntable hit when you hear it, but when you hear something special, you know it and you find out a way creatively to make that work. I mean, Sarah McLaughlin's Angel, a first number one hit, was not considered by the record label at the time to be a single. So what we needed to do was to find a vehicle to get it known better. As such, City of Angels, where it was the fourth single from that soundtrack, worked by Warner Brothers, not by BMG, and it became Sarah's first ever number one single. But it was a five minute ballad, and really, the song was based on the fact of someone committing suicide. But Sarah writes from a point of view that you don't know that. She writes from the point of view that you make the song your own. So Angel's a very cathartic song that is used in so many uses by so many people to convey so much feeling. And it's those frozen thoughts that she created which are transparent and transferable. And a manager's ability to intuitively know it when you hear it is probably the most powerful thing that, 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 that most powerful tool that a manager has.